Hi, everybody. Welcome back to New York City. We're here at the New York Stock Exchange, high above the trading floor. My name is Dave Vellante, and you're watching The Cube plus NYSE Wired. This is Media Week, our CXO series. And we're really excited because this, this is day two. We had Sonny Singh ringing the bell here from Oracle yesterday. He came up and, uh, and met with us. We've had chief investment officers, chief information strategy officers, chief information security officers, CEOs, CFOs, CIOs, the whole gamut. We're super excited to have Sam Kusra Shahi here. He's the head of strategic pursuits at Lambda. Sam, thanks for coming on. Yeah. Great to see you. Thank you, Dave. And bonus points for uh, pronouncing my name oh, properly. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks for your help on that one. And the head of strategic pursuits, that's a really interesting title. I've not heard that before. I want to hear what <laughs> you're pursuing. Yeah. But before we do, let's get into Lambda. Uh, tell the folks what you do. You guys are disrupting the traditional cloud model with a focus on GPUs, but take us through that. Yeah, so Lambda is an AI infrastructure company, specifically a GPU cloud that's helping AI developers and researchers developed the next generation of technology. It was started by ML engineers and AI researchers to really bring forward not just the infrastructure, but the expertise behind that to help folks accelerate their path forward with GPUs to build new models and further uh, human progress in that space. When I heard, first heard about Lambda and some others in this field, I was like, well, that's interesting. There's, they're AI specialists. They're going to do that better than the hyperscales. We're now finally seeing some some disruption to that space. And Lambda, if I recall, is taking a novel strategy uh, similar to what AWS did in the early days, going after developers, being very cost effective, kind of playing the long game. Um, am I getting that right from a strategy perspective? Yeah, so I think like, you know, my role, it's a very unique role in, in a sense because I'm not only focused on catering to our traditional customers, which are AI native companies and developers of these new AI models, gener whether it's generative AI or, or others. Um, but we're also now looking at the production of these models, right? So the production grade across enterprises. And the other part of my role is really around the programmatic side. So business development, inclusive of you know the relationships that we have, building programs and new products that we want to bring to market. So it's really exciting cross-functional role for, uh, for Lambda. And when you think about what we're doing like you said, catering to developers is really like understanding with the contextually aware engagement of the things that they struggle with. Some of the mundane tasks around maintaining the infrastructure, keeping it up and running with the latest version of like firmware or libraries. Um, Lambda created a something called the Lambda stack that really caters to that. So we want to make it simple and accessible and you know democratize that access through different modalities and different products that are not just, hey, here's a bunch of GPUs, but ones that are more flexible, more agile, uh, as well as sort of a private cloud, right? That is not entirely in the public cloud or not entirely on-prem. Lambda can be somewhere in between. So it's a purpose-built AI stack, is that right? That's right. Build that stack for me, will you? Can you paint a picture? Absolutely, so when you think about infrastructure, you have your firmware and drivers, things that folks struggle with. Um, NVIDIA, you know, we're, we're exclusive to NVIDIA. Uh, that's all we build out. And it includes sort of all of your infrastructure, which is your compute, your storage, your networking, and all of the things that go along to make that all orchestrate and work together. Of course, you have, you know, requirements around storage and the performance that it drives. So really important for folks that are building models, they want to have the best performance. And that usually means that you want to optimize and tune that infrastructure. So that Lambda stack keeps all of those dependencies updated with a single line of code. You can just make sure that you're running the latest and greatest. And then that is also supported by our teams of machine learning engineers that support that infrastructure. And it's a homogeneous stack, is that right? And so you had to make some bets on the, the, the file system, I presume, and all the other components, and can you talk about that? Absolutely, so when you think about all of the different aspects of a cluster, right, so when you think of interconnected GPUs, we call it a cluster, and when you're building a foundation or frontier model, you want to ensure that all of those nodes of compute are working together in unison. Um, so the drivers that go along with that are specific to the compute, specific to the GPUs, and then you also have the networking dimension that's involved in that. And when you think about like building it from the ground up, well, Lambda has been around for 12 years. We actually started as a 
generative AI application and solved our own problem by building our own infrastructure. So the granularity of understanding all of the drivers and operators within that uh, infrastructure is what helped us design Lambda Stack. And that is the software that operates across all of those. And you know we, we have a file system, best in class infrastructure is what we like to call it, as along with world class uh, support from ML engineers. Uh, and I think like that's how we, our reason for existence, right? When we work with knowledgeable folks, we cater specifically to engineers that understand our value proposition because ultimately a GPU that's not uh, supported or is not working is not helping you achieve your objectives. So yeah, we run it all together so that they can work uh, efficiently. And, and you said you're exclusive NVIDIA. That's correct. Is that right? Uh, that's correct. From, is that from, currently or is that by design? Yeah, that's currently. We're, we're working across the NVIDIA portfolio. So that includes the networking and okay. that includes the GPUs. Okay, so you're exclusive <clears throat> probably for a while because you do an NV Link and you're doing all the InfiniBand stuff. That's correct. And, so, and the advantage, presumably, is that Jensen loves you. <laughs> <laughs> so you can get supply, right? I, I presume that's part of the advantage that you bring to customers is you actually have GPUs and yeah. you're probably sold out like everybody else, but you know. <laughs> well, yeah. I, th I think like, you know, as I mentioned before, a GPU in of itself doesn't do anything for you unless it's operating right. and it's operating efficiently. People are making significant investments into this area, whether they're AI native companies or large enterprises, and they want to ensure that they have a team that's backing these. So, of, of you know, recently since the OpenAI released uh, ChatGPT, a lot of different entrants have come into the AI space, and a lot of GPU providers have entered to, to fill those those demands, as you mentioned, right? And you know, Lambda has been doing this for many years, 12, 12 years, and you know, we genuinely believe in this idea of like being highly focused on AI. So it's not just a GPU, it's about enabling customers to achieve their objectives. So when you think about what we're doing with NVIDIA, well, NVIDIA provides that infrastructure and we believe it's the best in class that is able to drive the best price for performance to accelerate outcomes for customers. But what we're also thinking about is the support that goes along with that, right? How do you help a customer deploy and stay informed as to the next generation of GPUs and what that means for their specific use case or model. So that's how we partner with NVIDIA. It's not just here's a bunch of GPUs, but it's like, how are you going to use it? How do we deploy it for you? And how do we manage and maintain it for you? We had uh, Ivana Delevska on. She's a, a chief investment officer at a, a fund called Spear Invest. And she was here yesterday making the point, you know, everybody thinks NVIDIA is just GPUs, but they're actually a systems company. Absolutely. And so I'm curious as to, I mean, we hear that in NVIDIA marketing. How has that benefited you as an NVIDIA partner and, and customer, that system design thinking? Yeah, so, you know, the it, it's really being well informed as to that software stack. Mm -hmm. um, there's obviously changes that are happening there. We were at GTC listening to Jensen's keynote about some of the updates around NIMS and things of that sort. Obviously, Grace Blackwell is on everybody's mind. So, you know, we're definitely like keeping a keen eye on that. And our partnership allows us to have discussions with NVIDIA about what they're developing and the next generation of compute, as well as the next generation of software and what that would mean for, for customers that are building and packaging up these, these models. And uh, so them. are you taking advantage of, of, of NIMS and the other surrounding innovations that we heard at GTC? Is that part of your stack? So, so we're thinking about how mm -hmm. we're going to bring that all together for customers. Uh, it's not something that we're actively doing, but it's something that we're looking forward to working with, collaborating with NVIDIA as well as customers that are bringing that into production. I'm not an engineer, um, so a, 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 and you may not be either, or maybe you are. Are you an engineer? <laughs> no. Okay. But my understanding is with Blackwell, and this is maybe a, a, a sort of a question that is out of scope. My understanding with Blackwell is they've done some tricks with floating point, yes. right? To, to preserve the real estate and, and, and deal with heat and everything else. Um, I, I forget the floating point precision eight versus whatever it was before. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Is uh, that changed the way in which customers, in your opinion, will deploy um, next generation GPUs? Are they different use cases, different workloads? What's your perspective on that? Yeah, I think the space is moving really, really quickly, not just from a hardware and infrastructure perspective, as you mentioned, the software, the models themselves are changing. Mm -hmm. And the types of models that are being run uh, are obviously evolving. So recently we worked with an open source model that 
meta release, which is Llama 3.1, yeah. 405B. It was really exciting it's for pretty us. pretty awesome. Yeah. Wow, I use it all the time. It's, yeah. it's good. Yeah, and, yeah, and that's what you're starting to see, right? That innovation, like we really believe in that open models and being able to like adjust it for your use case. So, you know, Lambda worked really closely with News Research to do the world's first full parameter 405B fine tune for that Llama 3.1. We're actually hosting it on Lambda now oh, okay. and you can go to lambda.com and access it for free. Um, again, right? Like, so when you think about sort of the innovation and things that are happening, it's not just around next generation infrastructure. It's also about the software. So to your point, uh, sorry, not just the software, but the, the types of models that are running to mm -hmm. take advantage of it. So uh, yes, changes to Grace Blackwell, super exciting. Lambda is on the forefront of that. Uh, we have a program right now where you can go to Lambda Labs and, and, and figure out how to use our Grace Hopper architecture to get your teams ready and familiarizing themselves with the Grace architecture, which is an ARM-based uh, CPU. Um, ahead of Grace Blackwell. So it's a highly anticipated release, lots of performance, higher uh, density uh, from a compute perspective. And uh, yeah, we, we look forward to bringing that to market for- And, and NVIDIA, you don't have one yet, do you? Uh, we don't, no. <laughs> and NVIDIA just launched an LLM, right? Uh, of its own, um, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think uh -huh. the, 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 space, the space is obviously changing like really, really quickly, right? So you see Meta releasing uh, open source Llama, we think there's other providers out there. Uh, uh, one that comes to mind is actually uh, Liquid AI mm -hmm. released a non-GPT. So this was a liquid foundation model and we were very excited to see that innovation uh, drive further efficiencies in, in that space. We're actually hosting one of their uh, 40B models, which has a tremendous potential, as you know, to drive down the cost of creating mo uh, new models and keeping them up to date. So that's another one that we're hosting and, and very excited about. So what specific strategic pursuits are you going after yeah. these days? Look, right now what we're trying to do is help enterprises arrive at a better price for performance in terms of what they're developing, right? So you talked about models. We're also looking at agents and how customers are, uh, are thinking about adopting AI to help them reduce their cost of operation or help them expand, you know, grow their top line or drive further uh, efficiencies. So, you know, agents is a, is a really exciting space for us. We're seeing a lot of work in, in a biotech, specifically around like protein folding and drug discovery and therapeutics. And uh, robotics is another area. So from a strategic pursuits perspective, I think there's like really two key things that we're doing. One of which is driving access, right? Providing expanded access to GPUs in different modalities, as I said. One of which is our, our on-demand cloud. We're continuing to expand that. Another one is around the cluster of short-term clusters, very flexible clusters that customers can access to do training runs in a short duration. So this really helps with innovation and research and development. And then we have this private cloud deployment that enterprises can take advantage of if they're looking for a single tenant, large scale uh, compute. So we believe it's one dimension, which is like how you access the GPU. And then the second one is around programmatic things that we're doing for, for clients, as well as a software and a partnerships uh, dimension as well. You know, you just made me think of something interesting when you were talking about, um, you know, the biotech. Yeah. We, people talk about AGI as this sort of all knowing AI, you know, like you'd see in Mission Impossible, right? <laughs> I don't know if you saw that movie with yeah. the AI that knew everything. And it strikes me that maybe the AGI is going to be actually a, a collection, and, and that's maybe the wrong word, because of, of, of smaller or domain-specific models that actually have really deep knowledge of a particular, you know, how to solve a particular problem. Yeah. And that maybe doesn't get into the, the AGI public domain, like the internet. Yeah. Right. It's 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 maybe this loose collection of knowledge that exists within organizations or within ecosystems that is very, very specific and not necessarily accessible by all. Um, do you think there's any like merit to that theory? Yeah, I think it's certainly one interesting take uh, on that approach. Uh, you, you could say it's crap. That's no, okay. no, I, I mean, I, I think. But, you, you think about it, it's like, wow, maybe that deep 
you know, in inspection into that data that's never going to get necessarily get into the public domain yeah. is how collectively the world gets smarter. Uh, it's out there, but but you guys are in a position based on what you just said to affect that. Yeah, mm. look, you know, we believe in human progress and furthering the field of AI. That's all we focus on when we get up in the morning. That's what we're thinking about is how to bring that forward. Yeah. And there's certainly things like AGI or agents or you know, bringing your own corpus of data to an open source model. Uh, we're very excited about reasoning models that were recently announced and what were the potential that that has to offer. And, you know, is it one one AI to rule them all? Uh, you know, I, I think the future will tell. But what we see now is access to uh, reliable access to high performing, low cost GPU infrastructure that's managed and supported by folks like, you know, our ML engineers is one of the key milestones that, that it's needed to, to yeah, progress reasoning on. is very interesting. In fact, uh, you know, Jensen, he can see around corners because he's, he's early and everything. <laughs> and he mentioned that at GTC. And, and I don't know if he did it in his keynote, but in a private analyst meeting, and he may have in his keynote as well, yeah. talked about, you know, soon, this year, you're going to have reasoning. And that's what's happening now. Yes. The AIs will take 30, 40 seconds. And his vision was, look, you're going to take me, maybe a week and yeah. tell it you've got two grand to spend. Go spend it. Yeah. Come up with a good answer. Exactly. And so again, you guys are powering that. So yeah. Sam, thanks so much for yeah. coming to theCUBE. Thank you very really much. Appreciate, appreciate it. It's great it. to have you. Yeah. All right, keep it right there. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE plus NYSE Wired, our CXO series on Media Week, high above the New York Stock Exchange floor. We'll be right back right after this sh short break.